This right here is a brain box for an old darts machine from uh, the 80s. I think uh, this one might be from like 89, 80, somewhere in the late 80s or so. And uh, it's pretty simple stuff. Uh, this is my cousin's. Um, he was saying while he was playing it, the screen went out uh, suddenly on him in the middle of a game. So I'm helping him fix it. So I took the brain box home. I already figured out what the problem was with the monitor. And I already cleaned it up because it's pretty dirty. Um, so when I was uh, troubleshooting it, first thing I was thinking, oh, the screen went out while he was playing, so uh, it can't be the tube going bad, so there's obviously something on the uh, monitor. And obviously, since this is a darts machine, it's going to get a lot of uh, vibration from the darts hitting the dart board and people pulling it off and moving it around and stuff like that. So it's probably some mechanical failure. So, you know, I pulled the uh, plug off the monitor and uh, let's uh, open it up. That's a cute little monitor. That's a 9 inch monochrome uh, amber phosphor monitor. Um, there's not really much to this thing besides, uh, you know, well, the dartboard has like uh, some breakout board that uh, plugs into here that I don't have, obviously, because I left the cabinet there. I'm not hauling that. Um, so yeah, I was looking at it. I checked uh, the B plus, which comes from here. This 12 volts DC B plus, straight from the power supply. So there's no uh, no power supply on the uh, the chassis. It's a little tiny chassis. You get 12 volts here, 12 kilovolts there. I tested with the high voltage probe. So I had all the voltages, and I saw the this the uh, the filament glowing. So I knew that it should have been working most of the way. I was looking at it really closely. I could barely see a faint uh, image on this side of the screen. So I was like, well, it's obviously something uh, something stupid probably. So I looked up the schematic for this so I can figure out what the pots are since some of them aren't, weren't labeled. And also it was just covered in dirt, as you can see in this picture. And I was like, oh, there's the contrast pot. Poke, and the picture came back. So this thing's got bad pots. Let's turn it on. comes up pretty quick. It's a pretty happy tube. So I ordered new pots and new caps and that's going to be pretty easy st stuff to fix. I'll redo that and adjust the monitor because obviously there's a linearity issue with the vertical. You can see how the things on the top are way stretched out and the things at the bottom are re really cramped. So it looks like someone used the linearity pot to try and adjust for vertical size instead of uh, getting the linearity down and then adjusting the vertical size pot. So I wonder if I can poke that No, it's not going to want to go out because um, I deoxided the shit out of that pot. It's going to get changed anyway and get it fixed right so it doesn't go out again. And um, so the other reason why I wanted to bring this home is that you can see, as you can see, the game runs fine. It's been working good, but for some reason the title screen displays a bunch of Z's. So the challenge here today is to figure out why that's happening. And uh, first thing I'm thinking about is double checking the ROM, although I'm pretty sure if it was a bad ROM the game program wouldn't run at all, but it's worth checking. And um, if you uh, turn it off, which is kind of cool, it just goes pew. Not really much of a spot killer there. Um, you can definitely see that the Z issue has been going on for a very long time because it's burned in all over the screen. and. Uh, Whoever designed this must have been very proud of the tic-tac-toe game because that, that one displays a lot. So, yeah. Now well, it looks like the linearity has been like that for a very long time too. You can see how this is all stretched out and this is all cramped down here. So, yeah. So uh, hopefully I can find schematics or a ROM online for this and we can uh, test it and see what it looks like, compare it, blah, blah, blah. And maybe I might have to burn a new ROM. Maybe there's something else stupid here. So I was looking at it. Um, this thing right here generates the video. That's some sort of like generic video generator chip. And then you can also hook up a external monitor to this. So if you want to hook up a TV, if the original monitor didn't work, you just use composite video. I think that's just 75 ohm signal. So, and then uh, CPU. Uh, 6809, that's the CPU there, so kind of neat little board. Pretty simple stuff. 
should be able to uh, figure it out. Also, on a side note, before I uh, dig into this thing even more, yeah, I cleaned it up a lot. Um, garage status update. I fully committed to the fact that I'm never parking my pickup in here again. So I opened it up, and now it's got more space. It's kind of nice that I can walk out here. I got plenty of space in front of my TV if I didn't have these computer towers there, which I need to get rid of these. I need to get rid of these three. These I do not use enough. Um, They've just been sitting in the closet, unfortunately, so I need to like sell them on eBay or something like that. Hopefully they don't get bit up too much, because that would be just silly for old uh, computers like that. And so I pulled the ROM out, and uh, I had to pull the sticker back just a bit to see the, the, the type of chip it is, and I pulled it up on my uh, Super Pros program here. So we'll just stick this into here. And we'll give it a read. Um, you know, you can hear it doing some stuff. So yeah, what's in the buffer? A bunch of stuff. That looks like a bunch of data. So that's the, the game program. Oh, it's got just ASCII text. So I wonder. Oh. So that's our uh, our tile screen, probably right here. So you can see um, there's the insert coin or press uh, press enter for game instructions. So yeah, um, with this, we should be able to go to our little, little, little. save the buffer to, I don't know, dart stop bin or something. So what's this one? Just uh, oh, I'll put the name on there later, maybe. <clears throat> da, 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 binary. So, we saved it to Dart Machine. What? What? No. Where'd it go? One second. Well, the only ROM I could find online is uh, for a V3 or. 3.23 or something like that while the one that's in this machine here is a uh, 3.3 so I can't find the same ROM and obviously everything's a little bit offset and then the tile screen's probably different anyway due to the different revisions I think that the available games are a little bit different too although I'm not you know try and read that and figure out what on the list is uh, different although Well, that's all the, like the explanations. Like you, you can go over here, push the enter button, and then get a description of what is uh how to play different games and stuff. You know what this this hardware kind of reminds me of the old bowling uh, bowling alley computers ones where you had like the little keyboard and the the monochrome monitor and it's all like weird text looking stuff. I mean, that's really weird how it's only the uh, title screen so. I don't think that there's anything wrong with like the uh, the RAM or anything. Otherwise, everything else would be all screwed up too. So I'm. It has to be the ROM, doesn't it? Or maybe there's something wrong with the uh, video generator chip and it's trying to use some special graphics or something like that. Maybe I'll have to look up a video online of these things. When well, looking it up on YouTube, I found a John's arcade video of it, and um, well, that's very interesting. It, his just says John's Arcade, which makes me think either he has an alternate or al altered ROM, or you can set your uh, your own name into the uh, computer here. So I wonder if there's like a self-test mode or switch or something in here. I don't know what that knob does, and I'm not going to find out. That's on the power supply, so maybe I can look up the manual and see if there's a way to set that. 
it might have something to do with a dead uh, CMOS chip right here. This is a, one of those Dallas modules or ST modules or something like that you'd find in a computer. So apparently it's supposed to be saving something, maybe as high scores or something, or maybe the text you want in the title screen. So I'm thinking that this is going to be uh, the problem, possibly. Let me find the manual and see what the dip switches do, see if there's a, a mode for changing settings. So looking at the manual, these switches right here, first two switches pertain to coin door settings. Switch three is to set like uh, the bullseye to 25 or 50 points or whatever. Just game settings. Uh, well, that one's kind of destroyed, isn't it? So the harness that goes to the coin switch has a test switch on it that should bring up a different screen. Maybe something in the test screen uh, can change that. We'll, uh, I'll look up the uh, pinout, hopefully. And then um, you can jump it and bring up the test screen. So I could have figured that out a long while ago if I just uh, looked at the manual. Here we have the uh, page for the spider rider writing, uh, writing your own uh, title screen here. But the problem is that the keyboard is the dartboard, so I have no way to erase it. So unfortunately, there's not going to be a way I can fix that without the, uh, the cabinet anyway. So there's no point in me trying to wire up the test mode. So, this thing is actually working 100%, so, although I don't know if the battery is still alive on this, the, uh, the data sheet states a lot, or a really long battery life, which we all know is kind of bullshit at this point, but maybe it's still alive, and, uh, the Z's right there are just a, uh, result of this. If you read here, note a game that is not properly grounded may place strange characters in random locations on the screen. Please make sure that the ground plug on the wall receptacle is properly connected. When I first uh, started work on this, it did not have a ground or ground pin on the plug, and uh, I, I put a new plug on it. So maybe that's just the result of being run for years and years without uh, a ground plug. So the game started uh, putting random characters everywhere until it filled it with Z's or whatever. So there's a, there's a chance that it still has some juice left in there, but uh, that's just gonna have to be something that is seen elsewhere. So all that's left is just to do the uh, monitor adjustments and recap and re-pot, which I don't have the parts for yet. So I guess this video is on hold for another couple days. All right, so I did get everything cleaned up pretty nicely, at least uh, so it's not absolutely filthy. And I did wash the uh, chassis in the sink as one would. And so it's time to uh, Put a bunch of potentiometers and capacitators on there and uh, make it happy, adjust it in, make the uh, picture better. I know this one self-discharges. I did um, uh, test it with the uh, pokey prober. Let me turn this up. Just ready to go. Um, so I tested it with the pokey prober. This does self-discharge, so I shouldn't be shocking the shit out of myself by just pulling this out. So, there's only a couple things we gotta pull off this, just like the uh, CRT tube socket here. And then these four wires for the, uh, the yoke. I got a picture of how they go, so I won't be uh, forgetting that. Um, the last thing, besides removing this, is the uh, CRT ground for the, the DAG ground. Um, they don't have to use the soldering iron to remove because uh, they don't have any removable connectors for that. And they get the capacitors out of the way since those are very, very simple. Just plug and play. Well, just plug and play as you can get with the soldering iron. Uh, replace the capacitors. And then um, what I'm going to do when I replace the, uh, the potentiometers is I'm going to pull each one out individually and measure it with the meter and uh, adjust the new ones to the right uh, resistance. That way everything is almost close or close to how it is right now and then we can adjust from there so we don't have to do uh set up from zero there's no uh b plus or anything like that sort of adjustments on this since the b plus of the power supply comes from the game so there's nothing dangerous that i can't adjust here and um damage stuff i did not get a focus pot that thing is like one mega ohm or something like that so I just uh, didn't find one of those when I was shopping on arcade parts and repair. 
If I wanted to replace it, I could probably find one on like Mauser or something, but I was kind of lazy. I didn't want to make more than one package, so I'll get the uh, capacitors going. If you're watching my channel, I'm guessing you probably already know what recapping looks like, so I'm going to pause the video here and uh, get the capacitors done, and then I'll show you what I'm going to do with the potentiometers later. All right, so I got some of these gross old capacitors out of there. They're all nice, shiny, new. And that's uh, nice and shiny and stuff. I got some weirdo capacitors in here, like uh, this one here. This is like a non-polar 7 microfarad or some weird thing like that. But yeah, these are old. They're gross. We're going to put new uh, potentiometers. These should be um, generally the uh, same footprint. And I got a list of what goes where. So all these are all different pots, except for that one, apparently. So vertical linearity, that's going to be uh, 200K. So 200K, that's this one here. I got two of those, too. So we're going to need this one. Yeah, that should be the uh, same footprint right there. So I'll take this vertical linearity pot out. Yeah, that's hot. Sure, I got all the solder out. Oh. Still kind of stuck up on there. Hopefully, it's not getting plugged up. So, this is 200K, just to make sure you got to double check, I think. Or you should double check. So, time to grab. Ah. The meter. Probably only going to show this once because everything was in the way. Meter. So with these two, 124K, so we need to make 124K on this with the same pins here. So that's 124K now, so this pot is set to the same as the original that was in there. So we'll just uh, put that in, solder it, and um, that'd be one pot out of a few. Just gotta wiggle it into there. Like that. All 
All right. One is complete. All right, so as far as the potentiometers go, we got all new potentiometers except for two of them actually. This one right here is the brightness control. That one had been replaced at some point after the, that, that wasn't a, an original potentiometer. It was very different from the rest. Also had fresh solder on the bottom. So I, I couldn't find one of those on an arcade parts and repair. So now it's just gonna be how it is. That wasn't the problem one though. This one was the problem one. So I can put it back in and see if it fires up and explodes and uh, emits x-rays and blinds me at the same time. Let's turn the brightness up and see if we get a raster. Whoa. What was that? Maybe I bumped it, huh? So, I'm gonna get the linearity fixed first because that's been bothering me forever. So I got, I got the uh, raster and the uh, retrace lines up. I'll, I can go over to the uh, linearity over here. Should be able to. Let's turn down the vertical size. I'm gonna try to get the distance between the, the raster lines. Pretty similar on both top and bottom. That's looking pretty even now. Now I can bring up the uh, vertical size. Get a little bit of that overscan business going on here. Where's the contrast? That looks pretty good. Let's make sure our uh, focus is That pot's kind of gooey, gooey makes sticky. Well, that pot doesn't seem to be doing much anyway. Oracle, our horizontal centering. Turn it a little bit, that way our round is still on the uh, image here. Horizontal size should come down a hair, but I don't know if I want to mess around with that. I can adjust the geometry here with some magnets on the on the yoke, but I'm not going to touch those because that's just a bad idea. I don't know if those are glued or if they have snap on anything, the whatevers, and I don't want to do breaking into that because then you'll wind up with something worse than you started out with, and it's not worth it. So uh, you get my width coil adjustment tool. See if it will come in just a little bit. That's not looking too bad.
All right. So I think that's about as good as you're going to get the, the tube or the display from this dartboard. That's pretty good. So the thing with the Z's, I can't uh, get rid of them, as I stated before. But I did get this. This is a, uh, a new one from uh, Mauser. And uh, it, it appears that it's made, I don't know, just by looking at the uh, numbers here. This thing don't focus for shit, does it? Okay, right here. Doesn't quite look like it's uh, anything too terribly new. Kind of looks like it was made in 99. This fucking phone. All right, so I'm gonna stick this in here. If this is a new one, it should have like some sort of zero on it. This might be like the default state of the RAM after losing power, uninitialized. So maybe that is just bad. Um, so I'm gonna try to stick this one in here. I'm gonna guess that this one was wiped at the, at the factory when it was made, so it might just be empty. So I'm gonna try to put that in there and see if that will uh, make the results any different, just out of curiosity. I'm not entirely sure if this thing is, uh, that's hot, dead, dead, but we'll figure something out. All right, so you have the new chip in there. See if it will even boot. Might not, who knows. Yeah, that's empty now. That one is definitely clear. So I'm guessing that this one just lost its battery and uh, the RAM reverted to its uh, state. Either that or whatever value was in there was uh, determined to be invalid by the game, so it uh, zeroed out at CMOS RAM, so. That's also a possibility. I'm not entirely sure how it operates. So, at least with the new battery in there, those Z's are gone, and uh, we can put a new message in there when we um, put it back into the cabinet. So, this thing seems to be working better now than it did before. And that was the goal. And so I'll put this back in here, and you can see it run while it's in the case, just for completeness sake. All right, here's the uh, mostly finished product then, minus the uh, the dartboard and all the rest of the goodies. Obviously, I won't be able to show anybody that, but, you know, whatever. It's a game and it works. It'll count the score of the darts and uh, play all the good stuff. Glad they had the, uh, the linearity adjusted in better because that was driving me nuts. <laughs> but, yeah, just another video of... Uh, Messing around with all the electronics.